Hundreds of angry Air France employees walked into a meeting that was taking place by the executives of the company and they proceeded to rip the clothing off of those executives and protest the fact that they were discussing potential layoffs. Now Air France executives want to press charges against some of the 100 plus striking employees that stormed a meeting of senior staff ripping the clothes off members of management believed responsible for the airline's plan to lay off 2,900 staff. Now if you don't believe me we have an example. Take a look at poor Pierre, who had, like literally had his shirt ripped apart. Almost pilloried, like his, his last name begins to sound like that. And, uh, and look, this is incredible. Okay, so in the United States, first of all, I do not condone any act of violence, even if you're in the middle of a protest. You shouldn't do it, okay? Of course. But it's such an incredible thing to see such a huge difference between the United States and France when it comes to political activism. In the United States, you can have a former contractor of the NSA tell you that everything that you've done online and on your phone is being collected by the government indiscriminately. Everyone's spying on you and you have no privacy and no one does anything about it. People are like, but is this guy a traitor? Right? <laughs> That's the conversation we have. In France, you could potentially get laid off and people are like, fuck that. Right. <laughs> No, no, they're not taking it, right? So, look, our Justice Department came out and said, oh, the big bankers, yeah, they robbed you blind, but we, we decided they were too big to jail. That if we jail the bankers for committing the largest fraud ever seen in, in world history, right, in terms of financial fraud, uh, that it would uh, be problematic for the global economy. So we're just going to leave them alone. We're going to let them keep all the money. In fact, we gave them trillions of dollars to, you know, to back up their bad loans. And they kept all their bonuses, they kept everything, right? And in France, you know, you lay off some people, they're like, no, no, I'm coming. I'm coming to your house, right? <laughs> now, look, I we're not just saying it in passing. I really don't agree. Don't this is scary stuff. Yeah. Don't I mean you're ripping all the clothes off people, the guy's trying to hop the fence, an executive is hopping the fence to get out of there, right? For his safety. And by the way, let me give you some more information. Mm -hmm. I, not to interrupt you, but just so you know the severity of this protest, one security guard was knocked out and another injured during the protest while violent protests like Monday's are not unusual in France where the population has a long tradition of taking the law into its own hands. So yeah, I mean people were physically assaulted as a result of this yeah, protest. Yeah, and the security guard who's knocked out, he's also working for a living, right? Yeah. And so and, and it reminds me of this story in, in Greece to get fed up with the bankers, they rush into a bank and they kill a teller who's a poor guy who's working as a teller. Don't, don't, don't do it. What are you doing? Don't kill the examiners. Don't kill anybody. Don't commit violence. It's a terrible idea, right? So now, but as they have swung too far on one side of the pendulum, on our side of the pendulum here in the U.S., oh, if anyone got within breathing distance of an executive, they'd have been mowed down. I mean, there's no way we let any protester touch an executive in this country, okay? I mean, the executives, you commit the crimes, you do the fraud, no, yeah, you're going to go scot-free, nobody's going to get arrested, right? But if you even look at an executive the wrong way, do you have any idea how hard the law will come down on you here in the U.S.? I mean, forget the law, you never get there, right? I mean, they'll put you down. You know that in Wall Street, there is literally a command center where the big banks and the NYPD work together to surveil the citizens, uh, to make sure that no one ever gets anywhere near the Wall Street executives. So the, our police work with the bankers to make sure that they are thoroughly protected. I mean, that that's exactly what happened during Occupy Wall Street. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase paid uh, the NYPD m a lot of money. Um, I don't have the exact figure in front of me, but a lot of money to ensure that the protesters, A, wouldn't get their word out, and B, didn't cross the line. In, in the U.S., people, you know, you've seen it on TV a, a thousand times, whether it's in fake shows or in real life, people hop in fences when the cops are after them, right? Mm -hmm. And so they sell drugs or whatever, and then they hop fences. These are executives. They, they lay off people, then they're hopping fences trying to get the hell out of there, right? Yeah. So can we get to a reasonable, moderate position where we hold executives accountable, but we do it through the law, and we don't do it through vigilante justice? And, on, and here in the U.S., where we just never held them accountable for anything. And, right. and, the, and in fact, we celebrate them. I mean, Trump goes bankrupt four times as companies do, and he's leading in the race now for the, on the Republican side. Fiorina fires 30,000 people, right? They don't do this. She's in second place in the race in some of the polls. The Republicans celebrate her like, hey, way to fire the 30,000 people. Now that's a good business person. 
firing all those people. In France, they're not having any of it. They don't think that that's smart business. They don't think it helps their citizens. I wish they, you know, showed that in a different way than they did here. But uh, they're definitely playing. They're, they're not messing around. Not they're playing for keeps. At all.